next speaker today is from Loma Vista Nursery. As you know, Loma Vista is also a very large nursery in this area. And Lindsay Clear, who is the CEO of Loma Vista, is vacationing in Mexico. So she, she, e she emailed me last night and said, Leica, I'm in Mexico. So I'm like, OK. So anyway, so we, you know, we have Ben Cecil here. He's operations manager for Loma Vista. And Loma Vista Nursery, as you know, is a leading grower of high quality plant material for retailers, wholesale distributors, and landscapers across the Midwest. Founded in 1991 by Mark Clear, that's Lindsay's dad, Loma Vista is a family owned and operated business with 310 acre production um, farm located in Ottawa, Kansas. They have two full service landscape distribution centers located in Oleta, Kansas and in Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City, Missouri. Loma Vista also has over 300 acres of in-ground production trees located in Lawrence, Kansas. And what is more, uh, what is the, um, equally more important is that Loma Vista Nursery's container recycling garden was recently featured in NM Pro. The garden industry leaves up it to its name. That was the title of the article. Uh, the, and tells of Loma Vista's commitment to keeping nursery plastic out of landfills. So that's fantastic. So please welcome Ben Cecil. Thank you, Lika. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, well, she did a good job describing what we do, so I don't have to talk about that. So we'll skip the first few sl slides. Um, but yes, we are a production nursery. We grow trees, we grow shrubs. Uh, we send it out to landscape companies, garden centers, uh, places such as that. But let's get to the root of it. I want to talk about what to expect as you're in horticulture and the opportunities that production horticulture offers. This is what the public thinks we do right here. You tell them I work, what do you do? I work at a nursery. Oh, you play in flowers all day. No, I don't. Now, if you're somebody working in horticulture and they're talking to a new student, this is what they tell you we do. <laughs> we kill ourselves, we dig ditches. <laughs> Obviously, it doesn't keep you skinny, but um, that, that's what they'll lead you to believe, believe we do. This is how I feel when I do it. I get awfully excited. It makes me feel strong. This is what we really do. We do get dirty. We do work. I've never had anyone die at the nursery from doing horticulture work, though, without a previous ailment, perhaps, but fortunately, um, it's not backbreaking work. It is work, though. So uh, there's some myths that typically rise up and say that, you know, we have, it's a, it's a very tough job and hard job. Now it is, it does come with its challenges, which are the things that you enjoy that, that develop that passion. You know, the first thing is it has to be truly rewarding. The teenager on the left, I told to go mow the lawn. That's the response I get. The boy on the right, I said, go plant a plant. That's the response I get. They get excited. Um, not that there's anything wrong with grass, as long as you're digging it up and planting a shrub or something. Um, and then you also, you get to work in what I like to call a diversified environment. I moved here about four years ago <laughs> from somewhere not here that lends to my accent. And they um, said, oh, you'll love Kansas. If you don't like the weather, wait five minutes, whatever. I think these pictures were taken three days apart. <laughs> this is, <laughs> we're getting ready to experience it this afternoon too, aren't we? So yes, we, uh, it, it is, you have to learn to enjoy it. It's a challenge. It's not a problem, it's not something to be afraid of. You have to have a challenge. And the other thing with horticulture as you're going into it is that you have to mix the science and the art of it together. To know how a plant gr grows, Luke will tell you how, how that water gets up from the roots, what makes it grow, the nutrient ratios and things like that. But then also comes the art part of it, how to respond whenever the weather does change. You know, for us, what, three weeks ago, we were 60, 70 degrees. Now we're, it feels like negative 38, whatever it is. It's very cold. Um, we had to respond to that. We had to change things. Also, think about things in terms of technology and problem solving. How, had I been a good technological person when I was putting this together, I would have put up a video. We have the little harvest robots that pick plants up and space them at our nursery. Um, it's a labor-saving thing, but I didn't think about that because... Sometimes I just don't think. Um, but this is a nursery. This is a good example of problem solving in technology. This is a large nursery up in Michigan that's a propagation nursery. The guy on the left, at the top left, he's basically printing those by hand. Hard, back-breaking work. And 
te with technology and a little design and a little thoughtfulness, they developed that machine. Now they, I think they said they can do it in one tenth of the time with one person plus their back's not hurting. It's an enjoyable job. People want, just like with the robots, people want to come and operate our robots. They don't want to come and space plants all day for eight hours a day. Now there's some paths within production horticulture that you'll have the opportunity to, to uh, experience or go after um, as, you, as you graduate and you move forward. Some of those is production horticulture. They actually, or not production, I'm sorry, growing. Actually getting to grow the plant. Monitoring the nutrients, deciding when to prune it, things like that, to get that plant to the, the shape that you want it in. Then propagation, which I particularly love, um, is when you get to, I know I'm not going to put it that way, it sounds bad, um, but where, where you get to make new plants. You get, to, you get to start from cutting seeds, grafting, whatever it takes to uh, get that plant growing and really feed the nursery in its own production, feeds directly to the grower. And then we have pest management. But it's not only but pest management these days. Who was that had the chloridane or something showing in the picture? <laughs> That's not pest management these days. It's not kill all. Um, it's, it's implementing that IPM practice to be thoughtful, understand your insect, your pest, and utilize your, your uh, um, beneficial insects to help you control that rather than seek and destroy. Um, you have inventory. That's something that a lot of people don't think about. That's a good opportunity in a production nursery where somebody has to track these plants. Somebody has to monitor where their condition is. Are they going to be ready? Are they going to be ready when we say they're ready? Are they going to be the quality? How many are there? That's a big one. If we sell 200, we have 100, we have a problem. Um, the, and then also shipping. It sounds basic, but a good not base knowledge of horticulture helps if you're shipping from a nursery. You'll have to learn the logistics side of it, but to understand the plants and what should go out on that truck to make our customer happy makes a big difference. And then production planning. You have a chance. At some point, somebody's going to say, you have, I want this many plants in 2016. Somebody has to figure out how to make those plants and finish in fall of 2016. That's a, it's a big job, but it's an opportunity for someone in horticulture other than digging that ditch or, or uh, running through the fields of flowers. And the other thing, which I really don't have any experience with, is sales. Um, if we can grow as many plants as we want, but if there's no one to sell that plant, then um, we're basically we're in business for a year and then we're done. So those are some opportunities that you have in horticulture. And the big thing is, is you have to immerse yourself. Get that practical experience. Be the flower as you get ready to go. I even, that's my wife. I married a flower. Um, but... Um, you have to uh, get out there and, and get, gain that practical experience to set you up for a long, successful career in it that you love. And you have to enjoy it. You have to understand the challenges or the roadblocks that get thrown in front of you. are not problems or opportunities. And this, is, I guess that kind of sounds corny, but it's not meant to. They're enjoyable. They're the things that keep you. You can go in and punch numbers in a, in a, at a bank all day long, and that really doesn't mean anything. To be able to deal with a diversified work environment is, is very exciting. And you're also, it's good for you. I mean, you, you, you all are coming into horticulture at a time that is the opportunities are there. The market's coming up, the jobs are there. You have ample opportunity for employment and you get to choose what you want to do. I started back in the, I don't even remember now, it was a long time ago. And, um, <clears throat> It, I was on the downhill slide of horticulture. I've never got to see it pick up and move forward. I watched, I had the opportunity to watch it go down. So this is a good chance for you. Um, like I said, gain that experience. We offer internships. And remember, we're doing it for these guys. We're doing it for the kids. That tree we plant, that landscape we put in, and we do it correctly is for them. Hopefully they'll either, one, get into horticulture, or at least they'll have a tree to sit under one day and eat lunch. Um, but again... Uh, if any of y'all are interested in, in uh, production horticulture, the production side of it, we do have internships and we have a few positions open. So you're welcome to come talk to us and let us know too. Thank you. <laughs>